With updates direct hit and groundbreaking, we've seen an expansion in the number of ways to precisely strike a ground target, whether that be through ballistics computers or through guided air-to-ground weapons. So today I wanted to go over how to use these weapons and systems. The goal is to try and inform newer players, or players who have been having trouble with them, on how these weapons work so that they can become more proficient in their use. With that out of the way, let's start out with the two types of ballistics computers, CCIP and CCRP. These aren't guided weapons per se, but they do help improve the accuracy of dumb bombs and rockets. So I'm going to cover them first. You can find out what type of ballistics computer your plane has by accessing the X-ray view and then hovering over the pilot. In this example, we're looking at the American F4E and it has access to CCIP for its guns, bomb, and rockets. It also has CCRP for only its bombs. Now, let's look at how these two ballistics computers differ from each other and how each of them is used. Let's start off with CCIP. CCIP stands for Constantly Computed Impact Point. It takes your plane's speed, altitude, pitch, and projectile flight characteristics into account and then uses them to predict where the weapon will impact on the ground. To activate CCIP, simply use the Toggle Cannon Ballistic Computer for both your bombs and guns and the Toggle Rocket Ballistic Computer for your unguided rockets. Once the ballistics computer is on, we can begin our attack run. Simply have to nose over and you'll see the reticles change for each of your different weapons. Cannons have a dot in the middle of a circle of lines, rockets have a dot in the middle of an X, and you get the arcade bombing site for your bombs. Simply place these aiming reticles over the target and use whatever button to launch or shoot your desired weapon. Then we just have to sit back and watch as our weapons fly off and hit the target. On a side note, you may have to adjust to the left or right some if you're using a weapon on one of your outer wing pylons as the flight path doesn't directly line up with the reticle. Now let's look at CCRP. CCRP stands for Constantly Computed Release Point. It takes the same parameters into account that CCIP does and then uses them to predict when to release the bomb in order to hit the target. To use CCRP, we first must designate the target we want to hit. We do this by placing a sensor point of interest, or SPI, on the target. There are two methods of placing a SPI. The first is used when you want to go after tanks, pillboxes, or other ground vehicles. Simply place your gun reticle on the target and use the activate target point keybind to place this SPI. The second method can be used if you intend to go after a base. Instead of manually placing a SPI, we can use a switch mission bombing target to cycle through the speeds already placed on the bases. Once you have the speed placed, you will see a green line appear with a circle and a horizontal line on it. Simply fly with the crosshair on the line, and when the horizontal line begins to fall down, press and hold whatever button you use to drop your bombs, and once the horizontal line meets the circle, the plane will drop the bombs on its own. If you're going to use CCRP, I suggest also setting a bomb series drop so the plane can drop multiple bombs when the line reaches a circle. With CCIP and CCRP out of the way, let's move on to actual guided weapons. We'll start out by looking at a pair of stack cards to understand the important information on them. Here we have the AGM-12C Bullpup and the AGM-62A Walleye. Starting from the top, we have the total mass of the weapon. Next we have the weapon guidance type. There are currently five different types of guidance in the game that we will cover. Next, we have the maximum range and maximum speed. This only applies to weapons that have their own propulsion unit, and lets you know the maximum range that they can reach before self-destructing, as well as the maximum speed that it can reach. Some weapons, like the Walleye, don't have a set range, as they rely on the launching aircraft's altitude and speed to determine its range. Next is guidance time. Some weapons will only be able to guide for a limited amount of time, and this lets you know how long that is. Following that, we have the explosive type, mass, and TNT equivalent, letting you know how big of a warhead the weapon carries. Finally, we have either an armor penetration table, or two values for the radius of destruction and radius of fragmentation. With these basics of the stack card down, let's hop on over into the different types of weapons. First up, we have manually guided bombs. The only weapon in this category that I know of is the Fritz X. 
To guide this bomb, you will need to set up keybinds for both the yaw and pitch axis for aimed weapons. I suggest turning off the relative control setting in the control axis menu for each set of keybinds. This will make it so that after you release the button, the control surfaces on the weapon will return to a neutral position. When you go into the bombardier site, you'll notice there are four lines forming a box around the crosshair. This is to indicate the area that you can guide the bomb to after you drop it. You'll notice that the square gets smaller as the bomb gets closer to the ground. After dropping the bomb, use the yaw and pitch axis controls that you just found to guide the bomb until it hits the target. Next up we have the MCLUS, or Manual Command Line of Sight. The Bullpups, Nords, KH-23, and RP-05A all fall into this category. This type of missile requires you to manually guide the weapon in with your keyboard. After launching the weapon, use the yaw and pitch axis for aimed weapons keybinds to manually guide the missile onto target. Again, I suggest turning off the relative control setting. There is a learning curve when it comes to manually guiding these type of weapons, and it's really not that easy at first. Because of this, I see a lot of people using these more as dumb fire rockets since they don't have any drop. Still, I suggest practicing with the guidance as it can help fine tune missiles that would have otherwise missed their target. Next, let's look at SACLOS, or semi active command line of sight weapons. For now, the KH 66 found on the MiG 21 PFM is the only SACLOS air to ground missile. The missile works by having the launching plane use its radar to create a cone shaped beam facing forward. The missile then uses a guidance unit in the tail to keep itself within this beam. So all you have to do is point your crosshair at the target, launch the missile, and then continue to hold your crosshair over the target so that the missile can track towards and eventually hit the target. Next we have laser guided weapons, the KH-29L, KH-25, BGL-400 and 1000, ASL-30, L Nord, and the Mark 13 all fall into this category. The way a laser guided weapon works is by having the launching aircraft paint the target with the laser from an external targeting pod or a camera mounted to the plane. The weapon then tracks the laser using a sensor found in the nose until it hits the target. There are three different ways of employing a laser guided weapon based on the type of laser designator you have. The first way is with an external targeting pod that has a fixed camera. This is only found on the SU-17 M2 for now, and to use this laser guided missile, press the fire secondary weapon button to warm up the missile, after which you should see the missile go into an acquiring mode with a circle showing up above your crosshair. This circle is showing where the laser designator is pointing. If this doesn't come up right away, use the toggle laser designator keybind to toggle the laser on and off. Next, put the target within the circle, and when in range, you will see the missile go from acquiring to tracking in the top left. Then press the fire secondary weapon keybind again to launch the missile, and then continue to hold the target in the circle. The missile will then track towards the laser, similar to how the KH-66 tracks the crosshair on the MiG-21 PFM. The second way uses a laser designator mounted in the nose of the aircraft. For now, this is only found on the MiG-27M. To use this method, point your nose towards the target and then use the toggle view keybind to cycle to the camera view. Once in this view, place the crosshair over the target and press the fire secondary weapon keybind to warm up the missile. Then wait until you see the out of range caution switch to the in range cue. Then press the fire secondary weapon button a second time to launch the missile. You can then adjust your aim by moving the crosshair after launch. Be sure to keep the target within the camera's gimbal limits or you won't be able to guide the weapon. The gimbal limit is represented by the box you see on the bottom of your screen in the camera view. The third and final way uses a targeting pod with a camera mounted on a gimbal. Currently the British and French Jaguars are the only planes equipped with both the gimbal style targeting pod and a laser guided weapon combo. The main advantage of this type of targeting pod is a larger gimbal area compared to the camera found in the nose of the MiG-27M. Before going over how to employ the laser guided bombs and missiles, we first need to look at the controls for the targeting pod itself. You'll need to set keybinds for activate target point, deactivate target point, sight stabilization, and switch MBD mode. 
Activate target point will allow you to place a SPI in third person, and when in the camera view, you can stabilize the sight and lock onto a target. A SPI will slave your camera to the position on the ground, similar to how a radar can slave an IR missile to a plane. The deactivate target point will allow you to remove a SPI in third person, and when in camera view, you can unlock a target using this keybind. Sight stabilization will allow for you to place a SPI while in the camera view and to lock onto a target similar to activate target point. The main difference is that after locking onto a target, you can use sight stabilization to continue tracking the target while aiming for a specific spot on the target. Switch MVD mode lets you toggle between any night vision or thermal modes your pod may have access to. When it comes to using laser guided missiles, you can place a SPI near a group of targets, then switch to the camera view to select the exact one you want to target. Next, use the fire secondary weapon button to power up the missile, and then press it again once you are in range to launch the missile. You are then able to turn away from the target as long as the camera has a clear line of sight. If you block the camera with your plane, you'll end up breaking the lock as well. This is called masking. So long as you don't mask the pod, the missile will track towards the target you have lased and destroy it. Laser guided bombs work a little bit differently. After finding a target and locking it up in the camera view, turn the laser on manually. If you see TRK next to the GBU, that means the seeker head on the bomb can see the laser and will begin tracking after you drop the bomb. If it shows ready next to GBU, that means the seeker cannot see the laser and you need to maneuver the plane until it switches to TRK. Sometimes you may be too far away for the bomb to see the laser. In testing with the French Jaguar, I found this to be about 6 miles. I'm assuming this to be the same with the British Jaguars, but I've yet to get either of them. After you drop the bomb, you're free to maneuver so long as you don't mask the camera. Then you simply have to wait for the bomb to go and hit the target. The final guidance type we will cover is TV guidance. This type of guidance uses a TV camera mounted on a gimbal in the nose of the weapon and contrast software to lock and track the target. The AGM-62 Walleye, AGM-65 Maverick, KAB-500, RB-78, and KH-29T fall into this category. Using a TV guided weapon is very easy. Simply switch to the TV view using toggle view keybind, then place the target in the middle of the crosshairs and use either the weapon lock air to ground or fire secondary weapon keybinds to lock the missile onto the target. If you get a solid lock, the crosshairs will shrink. Then use the fire secondary weapon keybind a second time to launch the weapon. After that, the weapon will guide to the target on its own, leaving you free to do other things. All TV guided weapons are able to track moving targets. Though the ranges they are able to track varies between 1.5 and, and 4 miles depending on the specific weapon. This is not shown on the stack card, so you may need to experiment in the test flight to find this exact range. When outside of that range, the TV seeker will instead lock onto the ground. If you want to get a little more advanced, you can use the activate target point keybind to place a speed near a target. This will slave the TV seeker to that spot making it quicker and easier to find targets. Also, if you're adjusting your aim and the camera suddenly jumps back to the centered position, don't fret. All this means is you hit the gimbal limit of the camera and you need to adjust your plane's heading so that the target is within the camera's gimbal limit again. And that covers all the ways to precisely strike a ground target in War Thunder as of update groundbreaking. Whenever newer weapons or systems come around in the future, I'll be sure to go ahead and update this guide to include them. Until then, I hope y'all enjoyed the video and were able to learn a few things. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope y'all have a wonderful day.